Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Texas back over here with my first official Mad 18 Ultimate Team video about some information that you guys might find useful. I'm looking forward to this year. You guys are killing me saying, Texas, upload. Where the videos at? I just got tired of playing Madden 17, man. I lost the game in the worst possible way. And I was like, you know what? I'm done playing this game. I'm looking forward to 18. And I'm really excited about it. Everybody seems to be excited about it. Hopefully, this is a good year. It seems like much going in the direction that's going to benefit everybody and also benefit them, which is good. It's not going to be that reward fish relationship where they get all the good stuff and we get a lot of terrible stuff. Hopefully, it's kind of balanced. It can still change, but as of right now, the information that we're getting, it looks like it's going to be a great Mad 18 season. So in today's video, we'll be talking about which Madden 18 GOAT you should get based off of my opinions. And so don't get mad at me if you don't agree with my opinion. This is just how I look at things over here in this game. So before we get into that, two things. If you guys didn't know, I'm on Xbox, which means that I'll have the EA Access trial for 10 hours. If you guys want me to live stream that for the 10 hours, thumbs up the video. It'll be from like 10 p.m. to 8 a.m and you guys get your information then for me. But if you guys want that stream, let me know by thumbs up the video and we'll make it happen. Also, number two, if you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. This year, you guys are not gonna wanna miss out on the content that I have cooked up for you. A lot of good stuff, man. I've been taking notes, been practicing my editing techniques. None of them may be on display in this video just yet, but we're hoping that we can go ahead and give you guys the videos that you guys have been waiting for, and hopefully you guys stick around and watch every last one of them. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into the list today, which is gonna be about the GOATs you guys should pick up. Now, obviously, number one the GOAT that I'm not gonna be picking up is gonna be Tom Brady, but look at the guy's card real quick. He's not terrible. He's pretty good when it comes to just being in the pocket, throwing the ball. And 81 throw power, 85 throw short, 84 throw made. He's not terrible. And these cards do have the potential to grow or be increasing overall. I'm not too sure if that's going to be through team tokens or if these cards are kind of dynamic. When a new card comes out, you get an upgrade or how that's going to go. But these cards have a chance to get higher overall. But I don't think you should waste your goat on a quarterback when we all know that this game is going to drop quarterbacks damn near every single promo that are more than likely going to be better than Tom Brady. It's, it's a good card start, with, especially if you guys are going to be pulling packs and you're not happy with the quarterbacks that they have there. Because pretty much every quarterback from the 86 and under is pretty terrible. There's a few good ones, but they're all pretty terrible. 87 higher are going to be like the better quarterbacks in the game, and they're going to be hard as hell to get for some people. So starting out with Tom Brady would be amazing, but we just know more quarterbacks will come out, and this guy probably won't have a roster spot all the way until December. Number four on my list is Jerry Rice, and now it's kind of it kind of sucks because I like Jerry Rice, but I like the rest of the three I have over him better, and that's just because they will have places on my team for a while. I'm looking at this as which player will be on my depth chart, be in my my roster that I have for month until a better card of that version comes out. And Jerry Rice will be there initially, but then he'll get phased out by getting better receivers. You got Odo Beckham, that's amazing. Julio Jones. You have Antonio Brown. A lot of great receivers out there in this game. And Jerry Rice is great initially, but once you get better receivers, he won't have a place on your roster besides being at wide receiver five or wide receiver number six. So that's why he's here. I do like his stats. So 84 speed, 85 acceleration with 84 catching. That's got to be fun, especially in competitive mode. But he's number four on my list. And then going to number three is going to be Barry Sanders. Yes, I know some guys have Barry Sanders higher than this. But with the halfbacks over here in this game, there are a ton of halfbacks that have basically this types of ratings, which are elite, obviously. For some reason, a lot of the gold halfbacks, if you guys have been paying attention, the gold halfbacks over here in this game have great speed, great acceleration, great agility, but they have no ball carrier moves, which this Barry Sanders does, obviously. But with the amount of hatbacks over here in this game, I just feel like this guy won't be playing a lot outside of the first week. And I'm looking for guys that will be playing on my roster, again, like I said, for a while. And this guy will be there, but he won't be getting a lot of playing time. Because I do want to try Sean McCoy, I do want to try LeGarrette Blunt, and we don't know if Juking's back right now. Everybody's saying Juking back, but I haven't seen any gameplay of anybody Juking anybody yet. So while I get elusive back right now, if he's not going to be anything crazy, if you get what I'm saying. So that's why he's three on my list. Two on my list is going to be Deion Sanders. And I wasn't going to put this guy on my list. Gut Fox made a good point with his 38 block shed. It's not going to be crazy. But I figure this guy could be amazing, especially if this guy does get upgraded. Speed is what you really care for. 86 speed at cornerback is amazing. 88 man coverage as well, which means a lot of those guys with low route running should not be able to get open against this guy. If matchup gets a good matchup with those uh, 
play pre-play adjustments or pre-snap adjustments, you should be able to have this guy in the best situation that's going to be good for your defense. But 86 speeds on the camera, that's, that's amazing. This game did say speed's not everything this year, but we got to wait to see. We know he had it. say a lot of things in the past that may not be true. And so that's why we got to wait and just be patient. Hopefully that's the case. Because if that's the case, we'll have some fun this year. But Deion Sanders is number two on my list. And number one is going to be my man Ray Lewis. And the reason why this guy's one on my list is, one, he has the big hitter trait. And he already said in competitive mode, it, the force fumbles. A guy needs to have the big hitter trait. Now, I'm pretty sure if I was be forced by anybody over here in this game, but I guess you're more likely than not with this particular trait. And I feel like this guy can be on my death chart the entire year. That's all I really care about. I mean, you guys make about different things than I do. If you do, let me know down in the comment section below what is your top five. But this guy can be my middle linebacker three, four, outside linebacker, and then have him on kickoff coverages. And anybody returning kicks, he can hopefully lay a big hit on him, which then jars the ball loose, which gives me another possession. That's all I'm looking at. And also, Ray Lewis, if he does get upgraded, he could be a starter for a while over here in this game. My guess is he probably won't be, though, because I, think, I feel like EA is going to be dropping a Thanksgiving Ray Lewis or even a, a most feared Ray Lewis somewhere around that time. So he could be off the team fairly quickly, and he might not last until December, which I hope a lot of these cards do. But if he does, it's going to be a nice card to have on my kickoff team, which will hopefully allow me to cause a lot of fumbles. But yeah, 85 blocks is amazing, especially this year. You see a lot of these guys are low blocks here. That's what I really care about too, if you do play them on your team. Like Levante Davis is one of my favorite linebackers in the league. Favorite linebacker who's over here in Madden. He has like 70 blocks yet. So blocks is gonna be hard to get, good at run support, also good at rushing the passer. Very versatile, I think he's the best balanced card out of the bunch. And that's why I think Ray Lewis should be your Madden Ultimate Team GOAT because he's going to be my Madden Ultimate Team GOAT. And that's my list. If you guys disagree, let me know down in the comment section below what is your ranking from 1 to 5. And hopefully we'll find out what this Grow Your Beast or Grow Your GOAT means because I'm very intrigued by it. Because this guy can get higher overall. Or if anybody get higher overall right away, then this list may get revised. It may get revised because if... I can say Grow Jerry Rice, like, first thing out of the gate. That card is going to be glitchy, especially with the announcement of Mutt Champions, a.k.a. Weekend League. Woo! That might be the guy I end up choosing, because if the catching is to 90, he is going to be a threat. But that's all I got for you guys today. More to come. I'll be doing a top 10 players that got demoted from Madden 17 to Madden 18 later on today, as well as the Mutt Man podcast we'll record, where we'll be discussing the blogs that dropped today, as well as, obviously, the Mutt ratings. So be sure to check that out coming up on Thursday. It's me, your boy, Texas, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.